All right, everyone, welcome back to another video. I'm keeping the face cam in the videos from now on. I feel like it's a good little addition, so we're gonna roll with it. I got some requests on how to make some drum and bass drums. Or how I make my drum and bass drums. So let's go into uh, my sample pack volume three. I will make this available on Gumroad. There's all sorts of things in here and we'll use some of them in today's examples. But um, these are the kind of drums that we're gonna be making. So for example, if we were to use something more acoustic sounding, like I have this loop here, that is way more melodic and um, will actually get washed out in the mix more because it's not as tight and not as present. And then we have another one here that's more acoustic as well. So you can see totally different kick, totally different snare. And so I wanted to uh, kind of discuss how I got to this point. So um, I find it most effective to use hi-hat loops and samples. I don't make hi-hats from scratch. I don't even know how you make hi-hats from scratch. I'm sure you could use serum or something like that, but um, that's not something that I do. So uh, usually what I do is um, right here is one of the best samples I've found for drum and bass. It's this BOS underscore DLL. 174 drum loop straighter cymbals. This particular hi-hat pattern, uh, if you can find anything similar to this in any sample library or, you know, whatever, this is one of the best samples because it just has a long lasting transient on it. So you'll hear what I mean here. So uh, when you put that underneath um, a shuffle or snares and kicks, it uh, stands out and it really helps emphasize the drop a lot better. We'll continue to what I just said there, which is a shuffle. If you're going to be making, let's say, like liquid drum and bass or just any iconic drum and bass style, you need a shuffle. And um, I have this one specific loop that I use all the time, which is um, how I made that loop that we showed at the beginning, which is this uh, this one right here the toppy tops. So uh, this comes from the same pack as well. Um, I believe I got this pack on splice. So when you stack these on top of each other, you get that nice shuffle with uh, the hi-hat in the background. So that's kind of giving you your foundation, but now you need to uh, start thinking about the kick in the snare. So um, if you're making liquid drum and bass, go ahead and listen to every liquid drum and bass track out there. They don't have super present snares. Um, they're kind of like washed out claps. And so there's a couple different sounds I like to use for this. Um, of course, we need a clap. I like to use a quieter clap, one that's not that loud. I found this one works pretty well, serves as like my bottom layer. So this isn't our main snare. This is just going to be a layer for what's going to be our main snare. And so uh, obviously you would turn that down a little bit, right? We don't need it to be that loud. It doesn't need to overpower anything. So from here, uh, once you have the clap, then you need the snare. So just try and think to yourself, what would you want the snare to sound like? Do you want it to be really sharp? Do you want it to be, if you're making a melodic track, do you want like a punchy snare? I found this uh, shark snare, this punch one works really well for melodic style songs that have like a really present melody and huge saw stack. So I think my Soul Shards remix is a good example of that. That's where I used a snare that's more melodic sounding. If you don't want something like that, like if you're making a more chill song, um, probably like a wood clicking snare or something really short uh, will get the sound that you're looking for. So that's what all of these super short ones in here from Zenheiser are. I feel like this 15, and I use this 58 one a lot. So I found that this is a really, really, really good snare for that liquid style. So if you just turn it down and um, once you layer them on top of everything else, um, it actually creates a nice sound with the clap. Now it is kind of in a weird pitch, so if you don't like it being that low and that, I guess, bamboo sounding, uh, you could always stretch it and um, increase the pitch a little bit by doing that. Give it a little bit more of a click. And so that'll kind of, uh, really get that high-end punch in the headphones. Sometimes I guess snares are all about like layering. Um, like I just, 
I think this 14 one sounds cool. So if we just throw this on top of everything else and, um, I'm kind of visualizing like if we cut out the low end, uh, that high end that that snare has might actually sound pretty cool as like a tail for the snare. So now we should have a, a nice little layer with those three snares. So it's a good foundation to work from. Now for the kick, um, it really depends on what kind of kick that you want. I have found these days with um, my particular mixing style, it's different for everybody. Everybody mixes their tracks differently. So for my mixing style, the kick kind of varies. Um, I like to leave the low end in my kicks sometimes, but other times I like to keep the high end and um, you know maybe give it a little bit of a low cut so there's more high end. For uh, liquid drum and bass, um, which is kind of what this is turning into, because I think that's the most universal hi-hat and snare pattern, I would say a much softer kick with not that much low end is better. Um, so it really just depends. I'll just use this uh, Sharks one, for example, because I use this all the time. I use it in like literally every single track. Um, and I'm just gonna slope off the low end, this here. And uh, the key is to just to really not have the kick be that loud. It doesn't need to be that loud at all. I'm going to go with this pattern right here, which is where we have the two off the start and then the one halfway through. And so if you just repeat that and you turn the kick down so it's not that loud, you get the iconic liquid drum and bass pattern. Now we can kind of get into how to start making this sound uh, better because you can hear that it's kind of missing things. So one thing I would recommend right off the bat is adding a transient shaper. And uh, I go over this a lot in uh, my tracks. This is just a great way to add high end to your uh, songs. Um, I'm sure you can do this with any VST. I'm just gonna use Serum for this example. So um, we're gonna be using this macro LFO tool thing down here. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna take uh, your LFO one. So left click on that and drag it to level and then just turn the level down. So you're having this be at like 80%. Make sure you uh, turn on the noise as well. And then we're gonna go to analog and go to bright white. You can experiment with the different other noise types. I just like to use the bright white noise type. So we'll click on that. And then uh, we want to make sure that we go to the saw here. So this is oscillator A and turn the level down. Um, and then you're going to want to double click on the line here uh, with the left click and that'll create a point. And then you can go ahead and create a shape that kind of looks like this here. So you can see it creates a very short white noise um, tick. You can see we created a white noise tick. Just go into your piano roll and uh, put in some short notes like this. So now what we're gonna do is add that on top of our loop. So once we cut the low ends out of this thing, it's actually really gonna help us get some more high end out of the track. So you can see it made it much more uh, present in the transients. This is another trick you can use as well. If I'm just gonna mute our um, uh, purple layer up top here. Um, you can use this trick as well if you want your hi-hats to be more punchy. You can put an LFO tool on them. So if you load up an LFO tool on this uh, yellow thing that I have right here, uh, you can actually um, set it to the tempo of the song and kind of create like a sine wave like this with some strong depth on the LFO tool and it's going to give it a, a flutter. You can choose what timing you want it to be. And uh, this will kind of help make your hi-hats a little more punchier and present in the track. So uh, we'll mess around with different timings. I'll scroll through them here. Probably those four uh, work the best. Um, and even if you don't want it to be that sharp, you could always just turn the depth down and it won't be as present, but it'll still give it a little bit more punch than it originally had. So for example, and then of course we'll put our straighter symbols underneath that. So it's a good way to uh, get some punch out of your hi-hats. I did want to showcase um, 
since this uh, loop is just playing without any sound, let's put a pad underneath it so you can hear it in context when they're put on top of something. So that's just kind of a good way to uh, make DMB drums. Of course, if you really want this to sound super liquidy, I would turn the LFO tool off and then uh, you could probably add uh, like an OTT and some strength. I have a hi-hat channel state that I use for this type of stuff regularly. It kind of has a setting that looks like this. So it really increases the length or not the length, the volume of the um, straighter symbols. So I'm talking about this top layer that we have up here. Um, it, it really emphasizes that layer and um, kind of brings out that high end more. So you get this instead. So yeah, that's just kind of a way to make some DMB drums. Um, uh, we'll go over some final tricks here. There's this loop from Fox Stevenson that's very crunchy as well that I like to add because it just kind of gives a little more presence to the drums. So I would say the biggest thing for you if you want to make DMB drums is um, just try and uh, go through a lot of samples and different things that sound interesting to you and stack them on top of each other and really create... Um, lots of layers. This loop itself isn't very good, uh, but once you add it underneath all of this stuff, it actually works really, really well. A little bit of a low cut so that there's no bass creeping through. This is a really, really nice layer for underneath the track. So I guess uh, one more one that I like to use is this really, really distorted fill that I have. Um, so if I could find it in here, it's from Fotech. It is this sample right here. By itself, it doesn't really sound that great. It's very, very distorted, very crunchy, but when you add it underneath everything, it actually sounds pretty cool. So what I like to do is actually take um, just one kick and one. So what I really like about this sample is uh, the kick and the snare have a lot of low end to them. So if we just uh, kind of solo out a kick and a snare here. And when you add that underneath, so if your drums feel like narrow, you could always add a distorted kind of breakbeat style drum underneath like this. And it really helps kind of bring out that low end. So now we get a sound like this. Trying to think of what else I usually add. Uh, I guess some reverse snares and reverse kicks are always great. I have these two from Chime. Uh, the snare is a little more tricky to work with. I usually do it on the third set here. So the third bar, so one, two, three, and on this last snare. And the reason I do that is because if you think about the pattern, you have the dut, 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 and then it kind of sweeps in and it's kind of like, Dut, whoosh, dut. It's a little bit difficult to explain, but I'll leave it quite loud so you can hear it. And I just find that when I'm making a track, that's where the sweep sits the best. See there? So now I would literally just take those and I would just loop them. Uh, every single time and make sure they're in the right spots. And so I guess the final thing I would add is probably a crash. So um, Chime has some great crashes as well. Quite a lot of high end, you get this sound. And just put that underneath and kind of just 
loop it at the beginning of each bar. And it's just a nice little ambient layer to sit underneath you know, the pads. You could always switch it up as well. Sometimes I add this one in there. This one's a totally different vibe. Uh, so I make sure to make it quiet and we'll just route it to the same channel with that ambient reverb. This is a very liquid drum and bass pattern now. It's gonna sound very typical to a lot of the songs that you hear in the liquid drum and bass genre. So now to complete this, all you would do is just side chain it, add a little bit of release time to the sub bass so it's not so uh, sharp on the cutoff. I like to do like maybe 150, I think is a 150 milliseconds. That is a good time. So you'll hear that that kind of gives a little tail end to the sub instead of it stopping super sharply. And yeah, that's how you pretty much make drum and bass. That's how I usually make my drum and bass hi-hats. Uh, thank you to whoever asked that question. If you guys have any more questions, let me know in the comments below. That's gonna do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you to all the new subscribers that are joining the channel and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later.